The New York Knicks beat the Boston Celtics 114 to 107 in their very first preseason game. There's a lot to unpack here, but some New York Knicks players stood out and showcased their abilities, while some other players, I gotta be honest, I didn't expect to see them, and they actually got some playing time. We're gonna break down the game and talk about who got playing time that I didn't expect to see. We're also gonna talk about Mike Breen and who he gave high praise to live on air. And he basically said, if this player played more minutes and had a more consistent shot, they can make an all defensive team. We're gonna break all of this down and so much more today. Let's get started. The New York Knicks won their very first preseason game against the Boston Celtics. And I gotta say guys, I'm extremely happy. I don't care if it's preseason, I don't care if the games don't matter. When it's the Knicks versus Boston, I'm watching and I want the New York Knicks to win. And thankfully, that's exactly what they did. Shout out to Bleacher Report for the following. As you can see here, the New York Knicks beat the Boston Celtics 114 to 107. And if you're looking by the quarter by quarter breakdown, the Knicks basically won two out of the four quarters. One of the quarters, that quarter being the third, they were tied 34 to 34. And in the first quarter, the Celtics beat them by a point, 29 to 28. And the New York Knicks did what they needed to do and took home the victory. Although they did it against the Celtics team that didn't have KP, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Derek White, or Drew Holiday. Why? Because they basically played a preseason game the night before against the Sixers, and their head coach said, you know what, it's preseason, I'm going to arrest all these guys and basically let the Celtics bench play against the Knicks. And that's what we saw. It was still a competitive game, don't get me wrong. But still, at the end of the day, I honestly would like to see the Knicks against the Celtics. Even though we're going to see that opening night for the New York Knicks on October 25th, I still would have liked to see even a few minutes of a preview of what it would have looked like with the New York Knicks roster against a fully healthy Boston Celtics roster because I think that would have been a very interesting match to see. However, we saw what we saw and there were a couple of things that stood out to me. Jalen Brunson being one of them. Jalen Brunson played six minutes, scored 10 points, didn't need to do anything else. Want to know why? Because Jalen Brunson is ready for the season. The season could start today, tomorrow in an hour. And Jalen Brunson would be ready. Team USA practice, Team USA play, FIBA World Cup, check, check, check. You don't think that made a difference? It absolutely did. He already looks in midseason form already. He's playing like that already. That's due to the experiences that he had in FIBA and all of that play he was doing during the summer. Shout out to Jalen Brunson. I am so happy to see this from him. He didn't have to play long because he only had to play six minutes to impress all of us. It was a sight to see. I love breaking down the statistics as well too in terms of what the teams did against each other in terms of field goal, three-pointers, and also free throws. As you can see here, the New York Knicks took the field goal percentage battle 45% to 43 the Celtics were woeful, 25% from three, while the New York Knicks were 31%. Not much better, but still nowhere near 25. Obviously at the free throw line, the New York Knicks weren't that great. Celtics weren't much better at 79%. Turnovers, the Celtics did a lot more than that. And the Knicks assist numbers are actually up. And that's something I wanted to talk about here. Because besides the players that stood out, one of the things the team did a little bit more that I found or that I was looking at was that they were passing the ball more. Now, maybe that had to do with more ball players and ball handlers being on the court, along with Dante DiVincenzo, obviously. But I think it's very, very important to note that they had that many assists in comparison to the Boston Celtics. Now, obviously, Celtics weren't at full power. But for the Knicks to put up 24 assists, that's actually pretty impressive. And I hope they can continue this trend of getting 25, 26, 27, even upwards and past that many assists each and every game because I argue if they can do that on a game-by-game -game basis they will be a very very difficult team to beat in the Eastern Conference 
the rebounds. Obviously, the New York Knicks didn't win that battle 50 to 39. Even though the Knicks had Mitchell Robinson, Sims, and Isaiah Hartenstein out there at certain times, they still couldn't win the rebounding battle. With blocks, the Knicks had seven. Kudos to Mitchell Robinson for a lot of those steals. They were tied. And as for personal fouls, the Celtics were fouling just a little bit more than the New York Knicks. So shout out to Bleacher Report for giving us that little breakdown in terms of the team stats. But another player that impressed me a lot, and we got to talk about him, is Julius Randle. Julius Randle, in terms of what he did, and he didn't do anything crazy, didn't have a lot of highlight plays, didn't go off for that many points, but it's the way he played. If you noticed, when it was Randle, RJ Barrett, and Jalen Brunson on the floor, in terms of who got the ball, in terms of, for me, who was the number one option on the team, the number two option on the team, and the number three option on the team, it was clear, at least in those first few possessions, that it was Jalen RJ and Julius Randle and this happened I believe last year as well too where the Knicks just got Jalen Brunson but I didn't attribute to Julius Randle trying to make RJ Barrett the two option on this New York Knicks team I basically thought that they were trying to gel and find chemistry together but you know what maybe Julius Randle is actually trying to give RJ Barrett a little bit more of the reins here and say you know what I want you to be the number two option for this New York Knicks team behind Jalen Brunson And I'll be that number three option. And if you look back at what he said at the Paul George podcast, he basically said he has no problem doing that. And he wants to have the ability to actually do that. So maybe in a way, this is him starting to do that. It's only one preseason game. So we have to wait and see if this is consistent and if we see a pattern with this. But I really like what I saw from Julius Randle. He didn't force the ball too much besides maybe a few plays. And when he did force the ball up, it was because he felt contact and threw the ball up in the air to go to the line. So you can't be mad at him for that. Kudos to Julius Randle. Shout out to him. I thought he had a great game. I loved what I saw. In terms of RJ Barrett, RJ's going to do RJ stuff. The ball was just not hitting that rim. Thank his lucky stars that one of those threes made its way in because I feel like if it wasn't the case, it would have been a lot worse for RJ Barrett today. But thankfully he did that. And also, at the free throw line, he was very, very, very good. Didn't miss. So, you have to give him props for that. Shout out to RJ Barrett for at least getting better with his free throws. Hopefully, he can get that offense together. And hopefully, he can get that defense together as well, too. Because if you're asking me personally, we need both from RJ Barrett. Not just one. I was absolutely floored. Surprised as ever to see Evan Fournier make an appearance to play for the New York Knicks. I thought given everything he said over the summer, there was no shot Tom Thibodeau was going to play him. But he did. However, I have a little theory on that. I think he played Evan Fournier because somebody told him to because they need to move Evan Fournier. They want to move him. And the only way to do that is to showcase his abilities and showcase his value. And not for nothing, he was hitting some nice threes. There was a nice dime that Dante hit him with for a three-pointer on his end, and I thought that was great. But let's move on to the next topic here. One of my favorite broadcasters, Mike Breen, had extremely high praise for Miles McBride. And honestly, you gotta love to hear Mike give so much praise to the guys the New York Knicks have, especially their young guys and Miles McBride. He said the following live on air, and I'm sure when Miles heard it, he smiled. Mike Breen said the following about Miles McBride. I keep saying, if McBride played 25 minutes a night, he'd be an all-defensive player. But the shot still has to get more consistent for him. Absolutely agree with Mike Breen. A legend, a great in this game. He's called so many Nick games, seen so many Nick players. So if he's saying this about Miles McBride, you absolutely can take it to the bank. And I absolutely believe it and agree with him. Miles absolutely, definitely needs to get that shot together. If he can get that shot looking better, more consistent, and he can hit it just a little bit more accurately just a little bit more efficiently, his game would take off because defensively, he's already there. He's probably, in terms of just defense, one of the better defensive guards in the NBA now, and he doesn't see that many minutes under Tom Thibodeau. Could you imagine if he had a consistent shot? 
he would be a very dangerous and very good player for this Knicks team. If obviously he saw minutes, because even if he had that skill set, I don't know if he would see that many minutes with this New York Knicks team that is chock full of guards. We have guards everywhere. So it's good to note that. But I wanted to highlight what Mike Breen said about Miles McBride because in my opinion, I think Miles McBride is a very underrated player. He's a very good player for the New York Knicks. He doesn't get talked about a lot. His skill set doesn't get talked about a lot. And I thought when Mike Breen took it out of his time to basically stop the broadcast and give him about a minute and a half compliment about his defense and him getting his shot together, I felt it was worth it giving him a little bit of a highlight in this video. Shout out to Miles McBride. You're great on defense. I hope that shot comes along because if it does, I think you can become a very important player for this Knicks team. But let me know what you guys thought about the game in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Who impressed you the most? Who were you most shocked to see in the game? Was it Evan Fournier like me or was it another player? Let me know in the comments below because honestly, guys, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. If you like this video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.